says the guy with the cigarette and the coffee. I am nothing but if not human. If you prick me, do I not bleed? Are you not entertained to be or not to be? Any other trope I can throw at you? Well. Oh, there's four people here. I guess we can get started then. If you got your Bibles handy, crack them open to 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 11. That's where we're going to start today. Someone else just joined. I'm leaving for a second to call April. Well, come back. I need you. Jenning Kellogia. <laughs> Jenning Kellogia. What a name. What must I do to be saved? I have an answer for you. It's very simple. Are you ready for this? Ask. That's it. All you got to do is ask. Open a Bible and start reading it. You can do that right here. That's what we do here on Sunday and Mondays. We read the Bible and we explain what it means so that you're not confused when you leave it. And if you'll stick with us today, you'll find out. And I welcome you and thank you for coming in. Take a moment and hit that subscribe button if you would. And I will lead you to the answer to your question and you can answer it yourself. You won't need me to do it. Or anybody else for that matter. What must I do to be saved? That is a fantastic question. And the answer to that question is, get on your hands and knees and ask. That's it. You got to be sincere, though. You can't con God. Uh, I don't care if you even believe in God. It doesn't matter. Because he believes in you, whether you believe in him or not. And you can't con God. You can't say... Well, I'll just ask and see what happens. Mm -mm. No, you got to mean it. You got to know you're in the wrong. You got to know that you've not lived a good life. You got to know that you were born a sinner. And you got to know that you need Jesus to get into heaven. If you know those things, when you ask and you're real about it, he will grant it and you will be saved. I got a little tri trippy answer for you that you may not even be aware of but you're already saved you were saved before you ever asked a question that's why it's so easy to get saved because you're already saved you see Jesus died on the cross and when he did that he became a sacrifice for all sin that means there's no need for sacrifices anymore he is the last sacrifice that covers everything including you so you're good just start leading a good life. Try to read the Bible. Try to understand it. Try to make your life better. Try to make better choices. Try to be better to people. Whatever it is your problem is. I don't know you from Adam, so I'm not trying to judge you. But whatever it is that's got you vexed, fix it. You're a grown man or woman. I don't know who you are. I, I'm not even sure if you're grown or not, but you're old enough to ask that question, so you're old enough to know an answer. And the answer is straighten up. Do right. And you'll be fine. And get with people like us. Because anytime you make a change in your life, you need to surround yourself with other people that have made that change because those are the people that understand what you're going through. Those are the people that will help you when you encounter pitfalls and stumbling blocks. So be sure to surround yourself with people. It don't have to be this podcast. It can be anywhere. You can go to find a church. I don't particularly go to church myself because I don't feel like I need to. Because I've got the Bible and I've got friends that I can talk to. And where two or more are gathered in my name, there I shall also be, says Christ. So I'm good. But some people need that brotherhood. Some people need to be around those people. It's good for you. It's good for your soul. It's good to have community. It's good to have people you can rely on, people that will back you up. So if you can't find that here or wherever, go find a church. Go introduce yourself. Be humble. And let God take you where you need to go. 
Okay, I think that's enough right there. Uh, you know what? <clears throat> as for uh, as goofy as an answer that he gave, you know what? That's pretty good. Um, that's a lot better answer than what um, a good number of people might give you. Okay, so I just wanted to share with you. Um, you know, you could you you might have a different opinion, but the guy tried to give an honest answer. And he, that's essentially good enough. Believe it sincerely with your heart in the Lord Jesus Christ. And like it says uh, here, let's, uh, let's find a verse that would uh, support what he just said. Okay. Believe in thine heart. God has raised him from the dead. Let's see if I'm close on this one. If thou shalt confess with the... With thy mouth, the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. So, you know, everybody kind of gives a little bit of a silly answer, if you will, or maybe a different sort of answer, however you want to look at it. But, um, you know, quite frankly, I, I think he gave a pretty good answer. Um, maybe not a perfect answer, but a pretty good answer. Be humble. And uh, realize that you need a savior, right? And we got a savior. We got a we got a scapegoat, if you will. We got the Lord Jesus Christ who can deliver us. And uh, so you might find fault in this guy, but you know, quite frankly, I thought he gave a pretty good answer. I just wanted to share it with you.